welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be talking to you about my football leadership coaching experience and how it helped me grow as a person. Let's get into it. So this all started out with me playing on a flag football team with this coach. I played flag football, uh, we were pretty good. We won two championships in a row and this coach was really good to me and he really helped me improve and just in general become a better leader because it allowed me to be the captain on the team for one of the teams, I was the captain and he really helped me break out of my stupid shell. After the second year, I was not allowed to play because I was too old and too OP for that league. Okay, but I was not, I was too old and I couldn't compete. So what I said was, and I, was, I asked my coach, I was like, could I help you coach the next year's team? And he was like, sure, sure. It's okay if you coach with Erica. And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, Erica's pretty cool. When it came to a couple months before, he said that he got two teams, one of the older league and one of the younger league. So basically what would happen was Erica's little brother would be in the younger league and I would probably take more control on the older league. I was kind of nervous because I just realized that I'm gonna have to talk to these kids and their parents because I'm gonna be assistant coach, right? So I'm gonna have to talk to people. So the first day rolls around, okay? So I'm chilling with my coach and he just told me, hand out jerseys and that's it. Just talk to the kids and that's all. But the thing was, that was on the phone. I'm He didn't show up and that actually made me have to take the lead and talk to these people and literally break out of my shell and not work my way out. So what I had to do was I had to obviously give the uniforms and talk to the kid and their parents, okay? At first, it was a little bit, a little bit intimidating. I probably sounded a little bit scared, but then as the like day progressed, I brought out this magnificent voice and magnificent hand gestures as you see right now. So yeah, me and Erica were working together on these two teams. So what... As coaches, what we would do is we would organize practices and make sure the kids are game ready and know the game in general. So the first practice rolls around and I cannot get these guys to listen. These guys are brats. Like, they're so annoying. Okay? If any of you are guys are watching, I'm sorry, but you guys were. Okay? None of you guys would listen. But I had to work around that and kind of gain their respect. So what I did was instead of being like, oh, you do this, you do that, I showed them what they had to do. Because I played flag football before, so I knew what to do. So what we played was this game called Gauntlet. What would happen would be one person versus the whole team. That one person would have the ball, and that person would have to run through the whole team without getting their flags pulled. I was that one guy. And it was, and I think I versed both teams at the same time. It was utter chaos, but I gave him like one of these head motions, gave a spin move, did all that sort of jazz and got through the whole team, both of them. And they were all like, oh my God, he actually knows what he's doing. Oh my God, I guess we gotta listen to him now. So they actually started listening and it was great. I got them practicing, I got them practicing routes, plays, all that sort of jazz. They started to know the game and it was great. First game came along, I'm pretty sure we won. Well, at least my team won, and it was great. Like, all, everything was great. But then the first obstacle came around. So, on my previous team, I had some friends that played with me, and they asked our head coach that if they could help me coach. At first, I was like, yeah, we would work great together. I've worked with these guys before. They're my friends. This will be great because the kids will have more knowledge to spread and it will be great. No, my friends did not coach how I thought they would. They did not have the maturity to do it and they would fool around and guess what? The kids would fool around too. Even through I've earned their respect, the kids would rather fool around with these two boon, baboons 
rather than listen to me, and I'm pretty sure that game we lost. And I told them, guys, if you do not listen to me, you do not listen to the plays, you do not listen to me saying or calling anything, you will lose. No matter how you put it, I am on the outside and watching everything. I am there to tell you guys what to do so you have the best chance to win. And guess what? Those guys over there, they are just there. Do not worry about them. They're just a distraction, basically. I'm sorry to say this. I know you guys are probably watching, but you guys were complete annoyances, okay? You guys would literally fool around and do nothing. I would tell you to warm them up. You wouldn't do that. Once you didn't listen, they wouldn't listen. So that was pretty not happy about that. But that was the first roadblock. I got that over pretty quickly by telling them either not to come or concentrate. They figured they'd start concentrating and all was well after that. So the season progressed. We were getting better as a team. I had my star players as every team does and I had my eh, medium players. I would make sure to rotate the medium players and rotate the stronger players because that's what a good football coach does. Even through we want the dub, we want the kids to still have fun. So it comes around that Erica actually has like some like places to go and he, she could not coach or like do any of that for like a week. So I was left with two teams. The older team, which was my team, and the younger team, which was his. They had, the younger team had the same plays, but none of them respected me. It was like starting from the ground again. So it's the game time and they would not listen. I'd be like, do this, do that, do this, do that. They would not listen. It was complete and utter chaos because er they, they respected Erica probably, but not me because I really never really coached them. So when I talk to them, they'd be like, all like, bugger off, Lou. They're like, you're, you're not good, like, blah, 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 blah. So they were even worse than my older kids because they did not understand the concept of winning and losing, okay? They just wanted to do whatever they wanted. And it really got me mad. Because that day too, even through I told my assistant, assistant coaches, to be mature around these younger kids, they weren't mature either. So I had one block that I thought I dealt with and another because I didn't know how to coach these kids. So two blocks come together and they make this like big mega boss block. Guess what? We lost that game. Big whoopsie because none of the kids listened because of the two blocks and I really was annoyed at that time. But my older team, I'm pretty sure won. But the thing was, is once I was done with my younger kid team, I had to run over to my older kid team, hoping that, that the older kid team team captain warmed them up and such. Um, Nathan did a very good job warming them up, but that's besides the point. So I ran over and I think we completely wasted the other team. We did amazing and I realized that respect is key. Those little kids didn't respect me, but the older kids did, and do you see the difference in win rate? Yeah, that's right. One loss, one one. So, respect is key no matter where you are. It's just important. So, the end of the season comes around, and I realize that I've really improved. Because every game, I would have to talk to the refs. I'd have to talk to the other coaches on the other team. And I had to talk to parents. The thing was, is all the coaches on the other teams all knew me from playing against their teams before. So all of them already somewhat respected me. So that was great. But like the thing was, is that when at the beginning, I was terrible at talking. Like I would not want to talk to anyone that was like my worst nightmare. I was like, oh no, uh, I have to talk to people. Oh no, I have a presentation. Oh no, so, uh. like it was terrible, okay? But now you see me now of what I am and that is a person that bombs, a person that is amazing at talking to people and amazing at presentations, as you can see, because this is considered a presentation. So yeah, I really grew from my previous self, and this coaching experience really helped me grow.
But the thing was, is none of the teams got to finals, which was kind of sad, but good coaching can only get you so far. And good players can only get you so far, too. Because our team was not as well-rounded as I'd like. And, yeah. It's okay. I got my experience, and I'm good. So... I hope you boys and girls have enjoyed it. I kind of spoke really fast, but I tried to be as precise as possible because I didn't want this video running on for too long, of course. So make sure to like, dislike if you don't like it, subscribe if you're new, and yeah, comment if you want. I hope you boys and girls have enjoyed, and peace.